Let's look at some drops that fit for this show. Bullshit! Fuckers! <laughs> Fucking so retarded. Joe and Cornette had a meeting backstage that involved yelling and screaming. Joe wanted a match with Angle. Cornette said no. He was going to have to wait. And besides, Kurt had a match tonight. He told him to go home. And Joe said no. He said Angle started something and he was going to finish it. May as well just said I'm going to run in the main event. Right. I don't know why they waste time, especially on this show. Robert Roode faced Rhino. I believe they got four minutes, which may be a TNA record in the last six months, actually. Tracy finally ran down, apparently during the four minutes that she had been gone, because he sent her backstage before the match, and then she ran out at the end. Right. I believe in that four minutes she had gotten another boob job. I'm not positive, but this is just my my feeling from taking a look at her bulbous breasts. So anyway, she distracted Rhino, or attempted to, but it distracted Rude, and he was rolled up for the pin. So he was yelling at her. And then AJ ran down to brawl with Rhino. Yes, here's where things got. And then Rude ran back down to save AJ. And then AJ laid out Rhino, which at least was an impressive feat. And by the time it was over, I couldn't remember what had started this or really uh, who was mad at who. No, the, the match itself was fine. Like you say, four minutes. It was decent. It, it went. It fell to sign. It fell to purpose. And it ended, and I was happy, or, or at least not angry. And then 8,000 things happened, and I just got steaming mad. TNA, no impact. That should be the name of the show. Nothing makes any impact. So then, Borash was waiting word from Cornette about the three-way at the pay-per-view. I don't even know what word he was waiting for. He's like, we're awaiting word. Like, what word? What what fucking stupid stipulation is going to be? That may be what it. word could you possibly be waiting for? So Eric Young ran up. The gimmick is he's a geek who has never had a girl. And he was looking for sex advice from Jeremy Borash. <laughs> Swear to God, everybody. Tracy came out and said that she needed him to do whatever she wanted him to do by next week or he was going to be fired. Of course, being fired. All right, so why not just say, sign with Robert Reed Enterprises now, today, or you're fired? I don't know. I don't know either. And, and again. Why does she have the power to fire Eric Young from TNA? No idea. No I don't fucking know. idea. I don't know. I, I don't this show. No. So Joe was ranting and raving about the angle situation. And then we had very cool men come out, wearing sombreros and such. And they wanted to know what they were going to have to do to get the attention of the real VKM. He has to hate his job, Tanay. He just has to. Yeah. He has to. I, I can't fathom him just doing all this stuff and thinking, God, this is great. I have to shill for this stupid VKM deal. BG cut a promo saying, still no word from Vince. Huh. Which is good since this was... Tape four weeks ago. <laughs> WWE and put something on the website or something like that, but said no phone call, no email, no text messages, no skywriting. Said you couldn't solve a problem by ignoring it. This is just the worst TV I've ever seen. It just kept going and going. Yeah, you know, I'm sure some of you have heard this story. Those of you that have it, maybe hearing it for the first time. TNA is no longer paying for hotels. Rental cars, that sort of thing. So all the geeks make 300 bucks. Now they have to pay for their, their transportation and where they're going to stay with that 300 bucks. But TNA still put away a million dollars for VKM. <laughs> good, good times. And you wonder why morale is down. And that should also tell you something for those of you that think this company's making money. They're making no money. Yeah. So. They went on and on forever. And uh, the, the purpose of this was to plug. That Wednesday, I think at noon, they're going to be the Alamo. High noon at the Alamo. They're going to be waiting for Shawn Michaels. They want Shawn Michaels to meet them at the Alamo. Sure. He's just going to, I mean, they mentioned that he's not on the road Wednesday because he's doing church stuff. He's just going to leave church to go to the Alamo. Hold I, on, everybody. I'm going to the I Alamo. have to go fight the New Age Outlaws. High noon. I'll be back around four. Yeah. Stupid. He actually said, and this is a direct quote, we won't be hard to find... We'll be the idiots wearing sombreros and ponchos. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, 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 and you'll note that I can remember the date and time for this Alamo meeting, which will not be yeah. on television or anything. And then Nash was doing musical chairs with the X Division geeks. So he had about six minutes on a 42 minute show built around stuff that ain't selling one buy. Right. Exactly. 
Meanwhile, no one's getting their hotel and their rental car paid for because they don't got no money. Hmm. What's wrong with this picture? Hmm. At least this was funny. They had, I mean, for, from a personal standpoint, I cackled. Yeah. But. But, yeah, bad, bad business. They interviewed Gail Kim. Speaking of bad. <laughs> Somebody, okay, first off. Jesus. Okay, first off, this feud ain't selling one buy. So you really don't need to focus on it. But if you're going to focus on it, Gail Kim's biggest weakness, promos. Mm Mm-hmm. So why would you ever cut a promo? Because you're dumb. So she's in there with James Storm, and they're yelling back and forth, and it's so impossibly bad. And James Storm is like, Chris Harris ain't coming back. You better be with me next week, or there's going to be trouble. And I thought, if he's not coming back... Why does she have to make a choice? <laughs> I. But let's just go with it. I have not read the spoilers for next week, but I mean, I just expect her to go with Storm. <laughs> just to swerve Seriously, everyone. Now, it's a swerve. I... Duh. I don't know. I, I I can't envision one person saying I can't wait to watch Impact next week to see what happens with Gail Kim. No and one. James no Storm. one possibly could. Nobody. It's an impossibility. Run versus homicide in a street, a Mexican street fight. I, I I believe I saw one place where this was advertised as the the main event. <laughs> I want to know why it was a Mexican street fight. What made it Mexican? Yeah, right. homicide ain't a Mexican. No, Run's not a Mexican. Absolutely not. Conan was there. Conan Maybe was, the fact was that he present. Was who was not? Who was not a Mexican? Are they right? Her, was Hernandez around? I don't know if he was actually Mexican, there or not. He? But he wasn't even in the match. He's not in the match. But he's like, It'd be a like having a Mexican in the crowd. I'm Mexican. trying to find something. I'm playing devil's advocate. That's what it's called. So, Spike got thrown around and shit. This went like two and a half minutes. The best was when Conan and Hernandez ran down to distract the referee. Cause in a street fight. God knows. <laughs> you don't want to DQ in a street fight. And then Hernandez killed him with a border toss under the ladder. Homicide got the pin. And then Devon and Bubba made the save. They're friends with Runt again after he beat them up or attacked them or whatever last week. And, and then, you know, friends fight. We talk all the time. We, you talked about it earlier on the show when people say it's, they're going to be hurting in 20 years. When Runt took this border toss onto the ladder, which is uh, it's bridged between the ropes and the, and, the, and the mat, I just enjoyed it. <laughs> I just don't care anymore. Mm. If, if you want to take the bump onto the ladder, hey, your body, go to town, kill yourself. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I guess so. Although that was not the stupidest thing we saw this weekend. No, we'll get to that in a minute. So, then we had Jerry Lynn. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the announcement of Jerry Lynn, Chris Daniels, and Chris Saban at the pay-per-view. We had shocking footage of Abyss and Chris uh, and uh Oh, my Mitchell. God. This this was Abyss. The Monster Abyss. The six foot eight, 300 pound Monster Abyss. Your NWA World Heavyweight Champion leaning up against the fence, crying and whimpering. And being beaten with a stick by an old man. Yes, crying. Crying. Weeping. Yeah. This was bad. This is a horrible, horrible idea. Mitchell said the sting bond would be broken tonight. Otherwise, the world would know the horrible secret. The horrible secret is how this is selling pay-per-views, if you ask me. It's such a secret even the fans don't know. And really, when the show was over, was the bond ended? No, nothing was mentioned about it again. (laughs) I don't think. So, the best part was, Mitchell is yelling and screaming at him for like 10 minutes, beating him, and all of a sudden, Abyss snaps and goozles him, and they cut away and never went back. No, so, (laughs) I'm hoping, okay, there's one thing to look forward to on Impact next week. I hope on Impact next week, they go back to the prison or wherever they are, and Abyss has had Mitchell goozle against the fence for a week. For seven days, he's just held him there. Yeah, I guess that's what's going to happen, so... um... Lovely. This show sucks. Then we had, what did we have next? Christian came out for his match with Kurt Angle. And I thought, Jesus, they got 20 minutes left. Huh. This is a new record. So, of course, Joe ran down and attacked Kurt Angle. They brawled all over the place, literally forever. Forever. Nine minutes, I believe. And ever. They brawled for a while. My first reaction was, why are you giving the match away for free? Second reaction was, okay, they're still brawling. Yeah. Third, third reaction was, wow, this is boring. Fourth reaction was, stop it. Stop fighting. I don't want to see you two fight anymore. Well, what's funny is first they start brawling and Cornette comes out 
And I thought, thank God he's here. He's going to say, stop these men. They need to be fighting on pay-per-view, not here for free. Instead, he's like, just let them fight. So they start fighting. And fight. They and did. they fight, and they fight, and they fight, and they fight. This company. And they fight, and they fight, and then they go to commercial. <laughs> yes. And when they come back to commercial, Jim Cornette has decided, well, that's enough fighting. Let's break them up now. <laughs> they fought. Who cares? So they they break him up and that sort of thing and and he signs a thirty minute somehow this all this fighting in the street led to an Iron Man wrestling match for thirty minutes. That's the deal of pay per view. This inspired Jim Cornette to make an Iron Man match. Now Joe had hurt his knee, so his first match back is going to require thirty minutes of cardio and hard work on his bad knee. No one thinks. No, well, no. This company, especially not. No one thinks. No. No, this company in in less than two months has made gone from uh, Joe and Angle being something uh, special to being something good to being something mundane, and now it's a negative. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to see Joe and Angle anymore. No, and and we're supposed to. We've just seen him for nine minutes. Now we have to pay. And for it sucked. Nine minutes, and we have to pay for thirty minutes. Thirty more minutes of grappling from these two men. God, damn, I'm sure it'll be fine when it's over, but but right now I just I don't want to see them anymore. Yeah. So anyway, that was the this is anti-promotion. And then there's more. Of course, since this is TNA, more. it led to Christian versus Angle, and they had two minutes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't even know if this was announced in advance, by the way. I impossible. Christian and Kurt Angle. Anyway. Match went two minutes, Angle hit one German, and then Tomko hit the ring for the DQ, I guess. For the stoppage. It yeah. just stopped at that point. It just really ended. And then the lights went out and came back on. Sting was there to help Angle, who is now inexplicably a babyface. I thought he broke a woman's ankle last week. He did. He broke a woman's ankle. seven days ago he took an innocent woman and broke her ankle. But now he's a babyface again. Hmm. He's friends with Sting. I hate this show. This show was wretched. God damn, I hate this show. Ugh! Uh, good hearty fuck off. That is our, uh, yeah. Welcome to TNA. Was that the end of it? Did it finally end of that point? Yeah, that was the end. There's after something all that else time. monumentally stupid. I, I, I could be wrong, but I think at some point Tanae was talking about Cornette having to make a stip for the world title match at the pay-per-view. Talking about how there was you, you freaked out, but I just I, I ignored like, it. Yes, that's right. Because uh, apparently the the world. And Tanae agreed with this. The fact that it was a world title match was not important enough. They had to add a stip. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's, just a little, it's just a little piece of leather and tin. Sure. I hate this company. This was... this was Thumbs the, down! Jesus, dude. Don't be yelling so much. Yep, this was a uh, bad show. This is TNA. It fucking sucked a cock. As usual. I hate to use such terminology here on this show. We are very professional, but it did, in fact, suck a penis, this show. We have a lineup for the pay-per-view on Sunday, which, if I can find it, we will... Oh, who cares? I don't care, because there's a point to this fucking thing, you goofballs. So I see. Shut up and let me do my job. Here's the lineup. It is a 30-minute Iron Man match, Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe. It is the NWA World Heavyweight Title, Abyss versus Sting versus Christian, Team 3D versus LAX, the Paparazzi Championship Finals, 10-minute time limit with judges, in case it goes to the time limit, Ooh, just in case, Alex Shelley versus Austin Starr, Christopher Daniels versus Chris Saban versus Jerry Lynn, Rhino versus AJ Styles. P.D. Williams versus James Storm. The Voodoo Kin Mafia will be there to update their war against Hunter and Sean, which needs an update about this time. And on the pre-show, Lance Hoyt versus the natural that has not been fired, the blonde one. So, that's the lineup for the show. I've already forgotten which natural is which. (laughs) I had their names down for like one show. Well, too late. Now, here's the deal. What we're going to do is we're going to run down the show, and the question as we run down the show is, would you buy this pay-per-view? It's going to be a game. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. All righty. There was a recap from last week to open up. And Don West was screaming that last week's show was the craziest impact he'd ever seen, which that ain't true. I've seen about a month ago there was a show that I almost lost my mind. Cornette with Angle, 
He said tonight he needed Angle at ringside when he needed him. Angle wanted to know why he should do anything for Cornette. Cornette said, well, I can arrange a title shot for you. And Angle said, all right, you got me there. I'll be there. And it better be worth my while. And Cornette said, it'll be worth my while. You can always tell when Cornette is, is in charge of helping script his own stuff because it makes sense. See, I was going to say, this is the one where it, I, it occurred to me that Cornette has given up and making stuff make sense. Cause, that makes sense. Well, he also said that I am the one who got you the match with Joe. Whereas, in fact... He could not get a match with Joe because he can't sign Joe to singles matches. I didn't hear that line. That was in there. And I, I thought, what the fuck? I'll take your word for it. There was a cage at ringside with a sign under the red reserve. That was awesome. Like, So no one will walk down and, and take a seat in the cage. No, it's not for them. You don't want someone unannounced and uninvited to lock themselves in a cage. You don't want that to happen. Kurt Angle faced Maverick Matt. This is the first truly haterific part of the show. Why the fuck would Kurt Angle go hold for hold with fucking Maverick Matt? I don't know. But but he did. He, he okay, did. anybody from TNA listening to this right now, this is how it works. When you have a guy that's supposed to be a big star, right, and you put him in the ring with a fucking geek, and he goes toe-to-toe with the geek, that does not bring the geek up to Kurt Angle's level. That brings Kurt Angle down to the level of being just another geek. Yep. And when Kurt Angle first debuted, he was a star. Now he's just another guy. And this is one of the reasons why. He's out there just like everybody else, having the same match with everybody else. There's nothing special about Kurt Angle except the fact that he's Kurt Angle. And clearly, that ain't enough. Because he had one goodbye rate for a dream match, and after that it was back to normal. Yep. This was so dumb. So they went toe-to-toe, which made Kurt look like a geek, and then Serotonin decided to run in all three of them, and Kurt beat them all, so they looked even more like geeks. Yeah. Everyone got buried by this segment. This was bad. Devon and Brother Ray were on a tank. They said they were coming to get LAX. Said they were a disgrace to the flag, the country, and the titles, in that order. That was interesting. I, I could not hate this because Devon was humming the Battle Hymn of the Republic the entire time. Yes. So this gets a thumbs up. So then we had, oh, by the way, for those of you that we've had this discussion many times, both on the show and on the board, that want to know, what can wrestling learn from MMA? Because we often say that there are things to be learned. Record this show and watch the commercial that Randy Couture does for Pros versus Joes. Yeah. That is a fucking <laughs> fantastic promo, and it's five seconds long. It's basically him saying, I'm going to kick your ass. And you utterly believe that he's going to kick someone's ass. That's all it is. I'm going to kick their ass, not yours. Sure, yes. a number of people. Ass will be kicked is the point. Yes, that's the whole point. Rhino and Daniels and PD versus Saban, AJ, and James Storm. Why James Storm is a random X Division geek now, I have no idea. This feud's dead. Gail Kim came out with him. So, if you recall, last week she was given an ultimatum. You either come with me or you're unemployed because Chris Harris ain't coming back. She couldn't, like, go find somebody else. No, there's no one else to manage. Apparently, she sucks as a manager so bad that her only option is unemployment or Chris Harris. So she's out there with him just being useless. And they had a match. Total blur. I don't have any idea what happened in the match. Six men did stuff. Six men did a bunch of stuff. And I don't even know what happened. AJ rolled up. Daniels for the pin after faking a knee injury again, yeah. This accomplished nothing. <laughs> explain to me what this did for the pay-per-view on Sunday. I can't do that. I can't explain what it did for anyone else in, in any other scenario. I don't... Explain what the Kurt Angle thing did for the pay-per-view on Sunday. Heard it? <laughs> Is that the answer you're looking for? Explain what uh, Team 3D on a tank singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic did for the pay-per-view on Sunday. Well, I've done the paper, you better entertain me. The question should always be, why would anyone want to buy this show? And so far, the answer is, there is no reason. The best answer is, maybe Devon will hum again. There is no reason. Now, I'm sure we're going to get a handful of people going, well, I'm very interested in buying the pay-per-view. That's great. So are 29,993 <laughs> other people, but that's it. 
This is not moving above that level because every show gives you no reason to want to buy the pay-per-view. Let's move on here. Jim Mitchell had a message for Abyss. He said for the first time in 18 months, he was standing there, sleeping in an alley, wandering around alone. He said he was the only friend of Abyss. He wasn't going to yell and scream. It was time for Abyss to come home. I hope you make the right decision, he said. And then immediately afterwards, Chrissy's like, Abyss will be wrestling in a moment. I was like, okay, Jim Mitchell doesn't know where his monster is. He's missing. He's wandering the streets. But he's actually in the building in the dressing room getting ready for a match. Yes, Jim Mitchell is, in fact, the only man in TNA who did not know where Abyss was. Nash and the X Division geeks were playing Texas Hold'em. This is how it came down to the finals of the PCS tournament. That's it. In an interview with Chris Harris, who was wearing an eye patch, may now be a pirate, sad music was playing. He said he had a risk of losing his vision, and as an athlete, his first thought was whether he'd be able to return. He said he was hurt and confused. Which is a great line for you and me and Sonny <laughs> O'Mara and maybe no one else. I laughed my ass <laughs> off at that line. He was hurt and confused about the whole thing, he said. This was my brother. He said he never wanted AMW to end like this. How do people want things to end? Well, hopefully not with a bottle being broken and glass being shoved in their eye. I guess that's true. I thought this was actually a great promo. And then they just cut him off. Okay, I'll ask you the question. Did this promo in any way make you want to see them have a match? It made me want to see more of where the story was going. Okay, I'll give you that then. Conan was down in the crowd. They, they, they interrupted Chris Harris's great promo to go to Conan down in the crowd. Yes. LAX was out there, and Team 3D was in the ring in camo. And the announcer said that Conan had been taken out with a sniper attack. That was her. <laughs> yes. Apparently Bubba Ray got himself a long-range rifle and shot Conan in the knee. You think I'm joking? No. A sniper attack. I was there. He has apparently been shot. And this is leading to a tag titles match at the pay-per-view. Right. Homicide was so mad that his man had been shot in a sniper attack that instead of immediately rushing him to the hospital, he was yelling at the dudes in the ring, You shot my friend, I'm going to take your belt. I, I, I don't think you're supposed to literally think that he shot him with a gun. I think it was just a really stupid line. It was a really stupid line whether they shot him with a fucking gun or not. <laughs> he's just down. I realize he's hurt and you can't actually attack him, but this was just rushed this, and dumb. And It was, in fact, rushed and dumb. And we don't even know. Maybe he did shoot him with a gun. It's TNA. <laughs> There's no answer to this question. Oh, God. Eric Young had his weekly wacky skit with Borash. Borash wanted to know if he'd gotten his protection. And Eric said yes and pulled out a bottle of pills and then noticed that his chest was feeling puffy. And then they immediately cut away. For those of you that don't get the joke, which is 99.99% of you... Really? That's painfully obvious. Really? He's on birth control pills. Yeah, okay, maybe it was totally obvious. But yeah, he's on... He was taking estrogen. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. the joke. So anyway, that was the uh, deal there. And then um, up came somebody. Team 3D. Yeah. This is their third segment in about 20 minutes. And my first thought was, Jesus Christ, haven't we seen enough of these guys yet? And then I thought about it more. And I thought, you know, this is the coldest world title program I think I've ever seen in my life. So that's got to get to Brother Ray first. You're jumping ahead here. All right, go ahead. Go do it. He said it was one down, two to go for LAX. Conan would be out a long, long time, which indicates they did, in fact, shoot him with a rifle. Mm. And they cut a passionate promo about wanting to win the belts. And all I could think was, after two years of getting fucked left and right, if they win these belts on a three-day build, this company is retarded. And you know what that means? Well, title I change on Sunday. If they don't win the titles on, three, on a three-day build, it's still retarded. No. No, no, the company's retarded either way. No, I, they they should not win the belts on Sunday. I realize no that. I realize that, but, but I'm they not, will. Oh no! If LAX wins, it will not redeem the company. They'll still be a bunch of retards. Sure. But I, as I was saying, it was like it was like they realized the last show before the pay per view. No one cares about our world title program. We need something else to sell. Let's push the hell out of the tag title match. So they did. I don't yeah. know if it worked. But they tried. Clips there to VCAM at the Alamo. Lame. Sean wasn't oh, there. God, I hate these guys. 
Cornelius Christian said Tomko would be banned from ringside Sunday. And to be fair tonight, Christian was going to be locked in the cage for Tomko's match. So they had Abyss versus Tomko in a WWE fourth brand battle. Christian was actually doing a better job selling than either guy in the ring. Uh, it's just, it was just classic, because when shit started happening, I knew where it was going to lead. I knew where it was going to lead, and I did. I had no knowledge of this. I could just, I could see, I was watching, I'll just tell you what happened. Tomko got a chair right in front of the ref, and shoved the ref, and I just typed, not a DQ. <laughs> and I could already see where it was going. So, after shoving the ref and grabbing a chair and not getting DQ'd, the chair was kicked into his face, which also was not a DQ. Then Joe ran down to attack Angle, and they brawled all over the place. And in the melee, Angle, who had been in charge of the key, dropped it. Christian escaped. Abyss hit the black hole slam, and then Christian clonked him with a chair. That was a DQ. I wasn't even listening to you. <laughs> I watched the whole show. I didn't care. A bunch of shit happened. Well, let me repeat it. They shoved down the ref, mm -hmm. they a used a chair, and the chair got kicked into the dude's face, none of which was a DQ, and then the finish was a chair shot DQ. Yeah. Who writes this shit? Vince Russo. That was a rhetorical question. Oh, I don't know. So then... And, and, and then what made you want to buy the show? Then, Sting made the save. Today was talking so fast, you couldn't hear a word he said. Total non-stop talking. And then Abyss raised Sting's hand, grabbed him, gave him the torture rack drop, and left the show with Mitchell. Now, in this storyline, for the past four weeks or whatever, the story has been, will Abyss turn? Is Abyss a heel? Is Abyss a babyface? You would think, wouldn't it be neat to go to the pay-per-view with the question unanswered? What will Abyss do? Will Abyss turn on Sting? Will Abyss side with Sting? What did they do? They gave us the answer for free on television. And now, what's left for the pay-per-view? A wrestling match. They didn't even keep the intrigue going into the show. No, no. and, and, and They and, built three weeks of intrigue and just gave it all away at the end. Yeah. Why would anybody... <laughs> <laughs> Want to buy this pay per view? I, I can't think. Give of a me reason. one good reason. You're a huge James Storm fan. You want to see how he does as a single star? This show was a gigantic thumbs down. <laughs> We watched one shitty pay per view tonight. It sucked. The, it sucked a dick. The TNA pay per view. And I would like to start out here. Let's call Brent back. I don't want to talk about this show. I'd like to start out with a message to Comcast. I'm not going to swear. I'm just going to give a little bit of helpful advice, like the helpful advice that we heard from Brent Kremen. And that advice is to the friendly folks at Comcast, get a clue. You people are so dumb. I just talked to a guy that has been locked up in a mental facility for three weeks, and he has got more of a clue than anyone I've talked to at Comcast thus far. Everybody knows the issues with credits. I tried to order a pay-per-view a couple of weeks ago, and I was told I didn't have sufficient credits. I called, and they told me my credit limit was at, like, 150. And I asked them to boost it up as high as it can go, because this is my job. They boosted it up to 750. So I went to order another pay-per-view, and I did not have enough credits. I called back. They told me it had been boosted to 750 but then somebody lowered it back down to 200 That ain't enough, I said. So they boosted it up to 250 and told me to call billing on Monday. So I called billing this past Monday, and I addressed the situation, and the woman explained to me that there was nothing that could be done. Really? 250 was as high as it could go. The only solution, she said, is that I needed to pay my bill in advance. Mm. I said, listen, I don't even write a check every month. This automatically comes out of my credit card account. <laughs> you, you, man, you, you, you bill me. It's electronic withdrawal from my, my credit card account. You bill me every month without fail. I've had this cable as long as I've lived in this house, and I had this cable for years at my old house. Right. right? Clearly, I'm not skipping out on my bill. Let's raise it up. She goes, nope, you have to manually pay it. 
So I fucking went out of my way to manually pay the bill on top of what I normally have to do. And today, at about 4.30 p.m., I called Comcast. I said, listen, here's my problem. I explained the situation. I said, I paid my bill in advance on Friday. How many credits do I have? Will I be able to order the TNA pay-per-view? She said, it appears you've got 80 pay-per-view credits. Your limit is 250. You have plenty to buy the pay-per-view today. I said, great. And I ordered the goddamn pay-per-view, and no shit, at 4.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the little thing came up saying, you don't have sufficient credits to order this pay-per-view. I am stunned that you have not put your fist to the television set. I called them. And I should note that Wrestling Observer Live begins at about 5.05. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. I was ready to start ranting and screaming, which would have been on the air because I had this on speakerphone with Observer Live while I was calling Comcast. Nice. And amazingly, or not amazingly, call went right through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. This ain't WWE where no. I... No. This isn't WWE where I had to wait 25 minutes on the line. This wasn't UFC where I had to wait 25 minutes on the line. This was Comcast, TNA, pay-per-view. I went right on through. No one bought this pay-per-view, kids. Right. It should come as a surprise to none of you. So, yep, I went on through. They got the pay-per-view on. I missed about three minutes of it. But it looks like, unless I get a dish, which may be in the very, very near future, if I don't have a fucking tree in the way like I did last time, I will have to be manually calling and sitting on hold and ordering pay-per-views until the end of time. That fucking sucks. Could they possibly... It's 2007. I will never forget the Far Side comic. There's a little child in the store, and there's a shelf that's about 30 feet in the air that's got flour on it or something. And on the door, it just reads, Inconvenient Store. <laughs> and I thought, that's what Comcast is. The most inconvenient in the fucking year of our Lord, 2007. I can't order a pay-per-view. I've got to manually dial in to uh, Darcy... Or whatever, uh, can I get 209 and uh, fucking order that way you have to on do my all rotary this, dial phone? To go through all this bullshit for the honor to pay money for their product. Yes. yes. These people can suck me. I said I wasn't going to swear I changed my mind. They can just fuck off. This okay, there you go. beyond absurd. So anyway, then we actually got this pay-per-view, which was and more we, of a punishment. Sadly, we had credits, yes. We, we had to watch the show. They may have been trying to do me a favor here. Uh, there was some good wrestling on the show, let's be honest. There was some bad booking, and there were some abysmal angles. And let's run it all down. It opened up with the last man standing match, AJ Styles versus Rhino. The rules here were you had to pin your man, and then he'd get 10 seconds to get to his feet. It was pinfall or submission, and then the ref gave him a standing 10 count. There's nothing like tapping a man to an arm bar and him being unable to stand on two feet within <laughs> ten seconds. Already, the, the the logic is all out the window. So they had this stupid match, and there were pin pinfalls. On a match where later we're going to have an Iron Man match. Yes. It, like we need more pinfalls on this show. I think there were 84 pinfalls in this seven-match show. So they did all their wacky spots and that sort of thing, and, and I guess the big spot, we had AJ Styles actually on Observer Live, and he noted that... When his, <laughs> I, I cannot even remember his exact wording, but I laughed my ass off. When he w went to do his springboard and the top rope got kicked and he gutted the top rope, he said his stomach came out his ass, which is a horrible thing. I bet that sucked. Yeah, he was hurting bad about three hours later. And I guess that was a big spot in the match. He, he still wasn't feeling good, but I just started thinking... If this were real, and I always think about this on TNA shows, what's what's allowed and what's not? Here's my example. AJ starts choking him with tape. Right. A foreign object. Yes. This is apparently legal because there's no DQs. There's no DQs in this last man standing match. So I was like, if Rhino got a bunch of Egyptians... Continue. And they all got like a two-ton stone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they buried him in a tomb. No. They just took the block 
a two-ton block and put it on AJ. <laughs> on his chest. Sure. And then he can hug it to his feet? Yeah. Sure, why not? Could you, could you win? <laughs> you would think by the rules as set forth. <laughs> you, you have entertained yourself. Uh, <laughs> Look at you. I was dying thinking about <laughs> Egyptians and a block of, just a giant block of stone. Rolling it out of the big log. Sure, just yeah. a bunch of logs and just pushing it down and then putting it on him. I'm like, is there a weight limit to the foreign object? Can you put something heavy on the man so he cannot get up? If not an Egyptian stone, perhaps a gun safe or some I mean, large if, object. If you put a bunch of chairs on him, but he's able to get up, that's okay. But what if you put so many chairs that he couldn't get up? Do you win? What if you invited fans in the ring to sit on him? Yeah, what if you, what if you what the, got the fat, oily guy and made him sit on AJ Styles? Could you win the last man standing match? This thing was just so stupid. So, and then it got better. Here, here's Here's what happened in the end. Rhino was going to gore him, and AJ looked over, and he saw he'd been down for eight seconds. He looked over, and he saw he was about to be gored again, so he just didn't stand up. He just forfeited. Didn't, didn't like, stand up and jump out of the way. He forfeited. Apparently, apparently it was better for him to lose than to be gored. Right. Apparently, he screwed Rhino by letting Rhino win. <laughs> That's, that was the tone. That was what you were supposed to understand. Yes, he... he by, by, by... I don't even know. By, by saving Rhino the trouble... By losing, he put one over on Rhino. Yes. You That's got it. crafty AJ. You got him there. So then Rhino... Then it gets better. Rhino chases him backstage, pulls him out, puts a table up on the ramp after giving AJ a pile driver... And he goes to gore AJ through the table, but AJ moves, and Rhino, like a moron, goes right through the table. So the whole angle ended, and they both were idiots. There you go. One guy was so stupid, he lost the match on purpose. And then the other guy tried to do a gore and, and missed and went through a table head first like an yeah. idiot. And this sucked before then. This match was dumb. They were, as noted, the rules were you had to uh, be pinned, and then you had 10, 10 seconds to get to your feet. Which raises the question: Why kick out of anything? Sure, just lay there. Why not just Why not just get pinned and get up? Get pinned, hang out. Are you losing? Tie your shoelace and then at the count of five, stand and get to your feet. So yes, they, they started losing points. They started kicking out of moves, and and, and it annoyed me because the near falls in the match are supposed to be at the ten count, not for the pins. So there's this extra level of idiocy. And finally, at one point, Rhino pinned AJ. I think he had a spine buster and he pinned him and. AJ was getting to his feet, and he got up to his feet about kind of seven, and then they just stood there. Yeah. They stood there, and I said to Rhino, get him, and Rhino will not get him, and they proceeded to circle the ring, and I thought, here they were five minutes into this, and they were going to do a lockup. Sure. This was... This was bullshit. And then we had the announcers talking... Oh, I actually already talked about that, the AJ stuff. Letitia interviewed Jerry Lynn. He's upset that she calls him a pioneer, because that insinuates he's old. I always thought he called himself a pioneer. I could be wrong. No, I can't, can't. So then he was upset about being called a pioneer, but he said he was going to teach these two young punks something tonight, and he'd be their teacher, which sounds old to me. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. Daniels, Saban, and Jerry Lynn. Russo knows exactly one finish to a three-way, and that is somebody steals a pin, and the champion doesn't lose the belt. Well, the champion loses the belt, but does not get pinned. I'm sorry, yes, that's exactly Yeah, right. yeah. Which is what happened here. Yep. I believe we are now on approximately five X title changes, and the champion is yet to be pinned. Something like that. I, I actually like the match, mainly because it, it, it did not have the point-to-point-to-point, to point to point, you know, uh, m- machinery-like flow of most exhibition matches. It actually felt like there was ad-lib stuff going on, but then the finish was just lame. Two and three-quarter stars I gave it. Lynn stole the Celtic Cross, whatever you want to call it, Hit Daniels with it, went for the cradle pile driver, hit it, and then Saban rolled him up and grabbed the tights, got the pin. So, yep, for those of you concerned or who care, which I think would be zero of you, Chris Saban is your ex-champion I believe again. He's, yeah, his second title win in like six weeks or something. Nash did a promo with Bob Backlund. This was the same Bob Backlund from about 1993, white shirt, red suspenders, red bow tie, he looked like he had no idea what in the hell was going on in the world. <laughs> he, in fact, may want to visit Brent's friends. He was a 300-year-old man in a 50-year-old body. 
who actually looks remarkable for his age. He's not aged in the following ten years. I will give him that, but it was so fantastically horrible that I just laughed we, we and were, laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. We were howling, and part of it was because I think we could hear the ring announcer. There was a third voice going on as these two were discussing, and it, it happened we got cut off, but... But uh, Bob Backlund was Bob Backlund. I'm not sure what inspired them to say, hey, we need Bob Backlund. That'll make it successful. But they went and got him. Because Nash kept dropping his name. Duh. (laughs) Sure. They went and got him. I believe at one point he said, TNA, yeah. (laughs) He did. That was great. And, 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 And then Eric Young came out. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Nash came out for the finals. They had a trophy. He looked aghast, like he could not believe what he'd just been involved with, with Bob Backlund. <laughs> the judges were Somalian Joe, who was a skinny, fat guy in a mask. Then we had big, fat, oily guy, who was a fat, fat guy, also oily, hairy, the dancer. And then they had Bob Backlund. The match was Alex Shelley and Austin Starr, 10-minute time limit. It was fine. Nothing spectacular. The highlight of it was actually Nash's commentary and just shots of Bob Backlund watching intently and taking notes. Yes, he was greeting this contest. Yes. So it ended up in a 10-minute draw, and they went to the judges. Somali and Joe voted for Star. Fat, oily guy voted for Shelly. And then Bob Backlund hit the ring. And he began rattling off a list of things. <laughs> I have no idea what Bob Backlund said. He kept repeating large words in ways that were completely out of context. He was scoring on such things as conditioning and build, there was, I there, there was conditioning. There was how they built the match. Yes. There was proper takedown technique. Sure. And he's giving them all scores, and they're all in the 80s and 90s. And then he gets to uh, proper pinning technique, and the scores are like 10 and 8. <laughs> and everyone booed, and he said, well, no one got pinned. And yes. Like, hey, you're right, all right. He, he was a cross between a genius and a complete raving madman. <laughs> Somebody needs to book, and I cannot believe no one's done this, the Iron Cheek Bob Backlund rematch. What the fuck is people waiting for? I don't know. This would be the match of the 21st century. Give them each six months to cut promos on each other and do the match, and you'd sell out the fucking... Spectrum. No, you still exist. I'm trying to think of. You'd sell out Pyongyang, North Korea. There you go. 190,000 people would show for this fucking match. So anyway, it was determined they needed five more minutes, of which they had it got about 30 seconds, and it was a great 30 seconds. And Alex Shelley won. And long story short, everybody turned on Austin Starr afterwards, including Backlund putting him in the crossface chicken wing. I have no idea how this is supposed to get Starr over. A, I, a I, match with Bob Backlund? I, I don't know. Uh, I, what I do know is somehow this all got Shelley over. The crowd loved him, and uh, they sat there for like the 10-minute thing, and then it, they did all the wackiness with Backlund. And then for the minute or half or so where they did the overtime... The crowd was going nuts, and when he finally won, they exploded. Yeah. So somehow, I don't know how, but somehow this helped Alex Shelley. In a strange sort of way. Maybe it was when Bob Backman referred to him as Alex Shelton. <laughs> there was that. Alex <laughs> Shelton. I had forgotten. You died at that point. Oh, Jesus. Oh, TNA. James Storm and Petey Williams. This is what I love about wrestling in 2007. No one actually does any thinking. Petey Williams is supposed to be the baby face. So how do, how do they get the heat on Petey Williams? Petey goes for a pescado, and in midair, James Storm gives him a little push, and he crashes on Burns on the apron like a moron. Why are baby faces so dumb? Don't ask me. So they get the heat on him in this completely absurd fashion, beating on him. Nobody really cares much. A couple light kill the cowboy chants. Gail's out there, and she she's a reformed bitch, I guess. I don't know how else to explain it. And she could not cheat. She refused to cheat. Didn't have it in her to be mean. She could not find it in her heart. So Storm cut him off, hit a reverse DDT, this, that, and the other thing, and finally he swept his legs, covered him, grabbed the ropes, pinned Petey, and the ref actually pulled the crowd afterwards about whether the ropes had been used, and nothing became of it, so I don't know why they did that, but... 
So afterwards, God, here we go. Storm handcuffed Petey to the ropes, and he asked for the beer bottle from Gail. She refused to give it to him. He got mad and goozled her, so she gave him a low blow and went all ape shit, was hitting him, slapping him, that sort of thing. And who should come down to make the save for the cowboy? From Gail Kim. From Gail Kim. The uh, 110-pound Asian is beating up James Storm. And who makes a save but Jacqueline of WWE fame and her two enormous breasts. Yeah. They have gotten even larger since the last time we saw her. She destroyed Gale with the death sentence, the leg drop off the top rope, and looked like she crushed poor girl's head. So it looks like we're going to have Harrison Gale versus Storm and Jacqueline. At least that makes sense in a strange sort of way. Sure. They've set up a mixed tag. I'm fine with that. Fine. And they were in the Gale, too, when she made her comeback. So that, was that, that is, in fact, true. They were in the Gale. Although, although it, that was the classic case of this is eight months worth of angles happening in 30 seconds. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Then we had VKM coming out. Shit. They announced that they had won the feud. <laughs> they had done it all, they said. I fucking hate these two. They spent the night on the front porch of Titan Towers. They ambushed a house show. But that was not enough. And then all of a sudden, as he's talking about the hatred that he has for Vince, ha, uh, Sean, Hunter, WWE, he suddenly says, on a side note, though, Paul, nobody likes to see one of our boys go down. Heal your wheel, bro. I screamed. <laughs> I just screamed. He was so angry. Oh, he just. He was so filled with hate. This was literally... That he had to send a nice personal message to yeah. Triple H to please get well fast, buddy. We talk about how you don't want to have a look behind the curtain during the show. This was setting the curtain on fire <laughs> and, and just pulling everything away. It's just, I don't really hate this guy, folks. All these other words I'm saying, they don't matter. In fact, this whole, the past six weeks of your life I've wasted with this VKM angle, it's all pretend. It's all fake. I don't, it don't matter. So then he gets right back into the promo and he's like, well, we went to the Alamo, and Sean wasn't there. He said they were cowards, and they were stupid. Hear your wheel. They didn't expect, they didn't accept the challenge. They lost out on ratings. They lost out on a million dollars. <laughs> but get well, he said. Still got a job for that rapping uh, piece of crap. He was talking about Federline, buried Trump versus Rosie. Crowd was chanting TNA. So anyway, they're uh, ranting and raving and this and that, and, and finally... Who should come out but Christy Hemi? What on earth? This is your stage, Christy. I've been watching you guys for three months, talking about how you're the foundation of DX. And then at WWE, Sean and Hunter, they're the foundation of DX. Well, I think you're missing somebody very important. And they deserve at least a little bit of credit. What about Joni Lauer? What about China? Why? Because she's just a woman in a man's world? I do too. She came down the aisle screaming, wait, wait, wait. And, and I swear to God, my first thought was, I don't know what she's doing out here, but if it gets her on TV, I'm in favor of it. I'd like to apologize to the world for those thoughts. I was mistaken. She was crying. She had to act sad. She comes out and she says, I've been listening to you guys for three months talking about how you were the foundation of DX and, and how Hunter and Sean, who she mentioned by those names, were the foundation of DX, but you keep leaving out one name. And we all thought at the same time, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do not bring her in. And sure enough, she said, and I quote, What about Joni Lauer? What about China? At which point, everybody began booing Christy Hemi. She wanted to know why China was just a blip in the foundation. Is it because she's just a woman in a man's world, she asked? Why do we feel like we have to run from this business? Because we're disposable? And now the people were chanting, show your tits. <laughs> she said she was not disposable. 
She would continue to fight these fights, not just for herself, <sighs> but for all the wrestlers. She said even if she got fired for this, it was worth it. Because I love it. I love it that much. Crowd was now chanting, we want wrestling. So she said, I do too. Women deserve respect. And of course, this was even more absurd since we just seen an angle where Jacqueline came out and just kicked Gail's ass and was teaming up with James Storm to just cause utter destruction. So, finally, BG's like, listen, we all love this business. There's plenty of room for everybody here. And finally, Kip grabs it and says, let me tell you something, you little slut. Everyone cheered. Yes. He said, why don't you go back to the strip club you got fired from and never interrupt me again. More cheers. Girls are good for two things. And now the place is going haywire. <laughs> he does a crotch chop, and she turned red and screamed, we are good for two things, our bodies, and putting men back in line when they step out. And then she slapped him, and Kip James went to kill Christy Hemi, but BG James made the save. So, apparently, as best we can tell, it is we're not insiders, but this is what it appears to be. It appears we are going to get Kip James versus Christy Hemi on pay-per-view. Right. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the best this part was worse than Rosie and Trump. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. This was one of the worst things I ever saw in TNA. I may have ever seen it my whole life. I was going to say, outside of horrible, violent things, this was wretched, useless. The best part was the crowd, because they are the lap dogs of TNA, they were chanting TNA and going crazy for the for the, the stuff on Raw, and they chanted Raw sucks. And then not five minutes later, they were chanting boring. Talk about giving the most horrible bullshit to work with. I feel bad for Christy. Sure. I, I don't blame her. It's not her idea. I don't know if the idea was to get her over. I don't know if the idea was to get her over as a baby face. It, from, from, if, if I read that script, I'd go, okay, she's turning heel. Yeah. That certainly didn't appear to be where it was headed. She was supposed to be a hero. I can't remember what it was. I think it was when LAX, it was, it was involving LAX. Something happened. Maybe they got DQ'd or something like that. No, Cornette announced they were going to have to uh, break up or whatever he announced. Remember that big announcement he made? Oh, he about said you have to wrestle. No, That's there was something else. else. Some, something about they were being stripped of the titles or something like that. Oh, the crowd chanted bullshit, yes. The crowd he, chanted he bullshit. He threatened to strip LAX of the titles and the crowd chanted bullshit. Somebody was right there watching Vince Russo as this happened, and Vince Russo put his head in his hands. Because he did not think that this is what was going to happen. He's a fucking moron. He thought that this was going to be this gigantic babyface explosion when Jim Cornette stripped LAX of the tag titles. Not realizing that LAX is actually really cool, yeah. and everybody actually greatly respects him, and they think that that's bullshit for them to be stripped of the titles. I'll bet he wrote this and thought, boy, everyone's going to be talking about Christy Hemi in the morning. She's going to be the hottest act in wrestling. The hero it's, of women everywhere. Instead, everybody's going to be talking about this all right. The dumbest bullshit they ever saw. The best thing is it came out of nowhere. She's been there like six months as the happy Teehee spokesmodel who does the intros before commercials, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, she has to take a stand. God, this was horrid. Just so fucking bad. And we pay for it. Then LAX, Team 3D, tag team titles. Bubba cut a promo before the match, talking about young guys who'd never been anywhere or done anything. Meanwhile, he worked in jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's fat and white. Even the most indie guys nowadays don't wear jeans and t-shirts anymore. They at least get, like, athletic gear and kick pads. He just dresses like the fattest fan in the crowd. Right. Goes out there, and, and I don't know if it was because they were not winning the belts or what, but they worked this match like they could give a fuck less. Yes. And it was an absurd match, and there was heat on Devon, and then Devon just sort of made his own comeback, and then he sort of nonchalantly was over by his corner after doing a bunch of moves, and then he just sort of tagged Bubba, the coldest hot tag I think I've seen in the 21st century by a wide margin. Bubba did some moves. They hit Homicide with a 3D. And then Brother Runt came down and, and splashed Homicide, and, and Team 3D got DQ'd. Right. Now, in their defense, that was the shittiest booked thing I've seen all year. 
I shouldn't say that. That's absurd. It wasn't the shittiest thing we saw all night. It wasn't the shittiest thing. It, this was stupid. It was shitty. It, this was stupid. Yes, the finish, to, to make it clear, they they hit the 3D. They were about to win the titles when Runt came out in a Santa costume, drunk and, and, and drinking. He climbed the ropes. They screamed, no, no, don't do it. And he hit the splash, and that was the DQ. Yeah. They did not physically interfere. No. They stood and watched as he cost them the tag titles. Nothing like a match or a show where 18 million people are running in and getting involved and, and putting concrete blocks on folks so they can't get up off uh, last man standing matches. And then some drunk guy falls off the ropes, and that's a DQ in the world yeah. tag team titles match. And you actually uh, did not watch the beginning of this. There was more weirdness. But basically, Bubba Ray Dudley wasn't given no one nothing. No. He was not going to sell tonight. He was just going to be on offense. Yeah. So, yeah, this is shit. This was bad. <laughs> uh, then we had the Joe Angle match. I don't know about the rest of you. I thought it was about three and a half stars. I can't give much more than that. No. It was 30 minutes. This is what I hate about Iron Man matches, and there are many things to hate, but we saw him go 13 minutes the first time, and an Angle won. Mm-hmm. So I'm going like 20 minutes the second time in angle one. Joe one. Joe one, whatever. doesn't matter. We just get the point of this. Then we saw the third match, which went 25 minutes, and there were five pins or submissions during that period. Yeah. There was a finish to the average of every five minutes. There was a finish. Yeah. Especially they teased one at the end. So, yes, if you count that. Now, early on, it sort of made sense because guys would lock guys in submissions, and they would tap quickly so they wouldn't get hurt for the rest of the show, but... Got to the point later on where it was there were so many finishes that they meant nothing. Mm-hmm. It meant nothing for either guy to beat the other guy. And ended up tied two and two, and then Angle got another uh, pin with a cradle or something like that, a clean cradle, I believe, which is even better. I think Angle's supposed to be the heel. I'm not sure. I have absolutely no idea anymore. Joe, I know, is supposed to be a baby face. I don't know if Angle is as well. And anyway, the best... The best thing was the last minute of the match when Joe was trying to get his back and throwing in these MMA elbows and trying to sink in the choke, and Angle was fighting like a mother, and I was like, it's suddenly great for 30 seconds. Yep. And then uh, Joe put him in the ankle lock and scissored the leg, and Angle held on until 30 minutes and one second, and then he tapped out. So he won on points, but was the loser in the end. And another shining example of a match where neither guy gets over. Right. This was supposed to determine who's the better man, who gets a title shot. What it determined was neither man is better. One guy lost on points, and the winner was uh, locked in the submission and saved by the bell. Yep. And that guy is going to get the uh, title match. Yeah, I actually, in the middle of this, I actually got bored. I did too. Yeah, it it dragged. I, I I was thinking to myself... You know, if this wasn't an Iron Man match and there was actually a threat of someone winning or losing any time, I might be more interested. But I know regardless of what happens now, it's still going to be going on in 15 minutes, so I don't care. I checked the board. Yeah, I, I looked I was, through my email, and I, I just, uh, it was, okay, great. Yeah, and, and, and then there was, some, there was flat, like you said, with flashes of greatness throughout. But, but yeah, um, and, and then it ended, and, and uh, I'm probably reading, reading too much into this, but I remember the, like the very first time these guys faced off, and there was the let's go angle, let's go Joe. And everyone thought, these guys are the men among men, and we're going to get to watch them fight. Tonight they were chanting, Angle sucks and Joe sucks. <laughs> I heard the dueling chants of let's go Angle and let's go Joe, but yes, there were some in there, but that's that's also the booking. Yeah, I know. Is Angle a heel or a baby face? Nobody fucking knows. I don't knows. know. I mean, the most fun I had during this match was us trying to figure out who the girl was that, uh, that Joe was with. <laughs> it's just Joe's girl. It's very much like like uh, you grow up with some these these biblical stories, and you know you learn that these stories were never in the Bible. They're these weird traditions from two thousand years ago. And two thousand years from now, somebody's gonna look back and go, "That was Joe's girlfriend," but we don't know because it was never identified. She was never identified on TV. She was just the girl with Joe, and I believe. Um, Ed Tang actually had the, the best solution, which was she was a prostitute, and this was why Joe was so angry, because when you pay 250 bucks an hour for a girl, and you got to take her to the hospital, that's money coming out of your pocket. That sucks. So he may be right. Ed, by the way, entertained himself during this match by doing origami. Yeah, he did. He, he, which, uh, you know, I don't blame him. Yeah. I should have done a little origami. Then we had Sting cutting a promo about Chris... He said he was going to kill Jim Mitchell tonight. 
Angle, Sting, and Christian for the NWA title. Abyss, Sting, and Christian. Am I right, Angle? If you said Angle. Abyss, Sting, and Christian for the NWA title. It doesn't matter. No, Sorry. this absolutely does not matter. They had this main event match. It was every bullshit TNA main event match you ever have. It's just like you're trying to keep up with what's going on. It's, it's all, I gave up at one point. It's all story. First right? of all, it was, for the first time in TNA history, this was an elimination three-way. Yeah. So fairly early in, Abyss got pinned and eliminated. So he's gone. And then suddenly there were still like eight bodies running around. There was Sting and there was Christian and The Ref and Jim Mitchell and Tomko and then Abyss returned and I just gave up. This is what I was, I was trying just, to... I watched Shapes on your television screen. This is what I was trying to figure out in this cheating match here. Okay. Abyss was the champion. Yes. Believe it or not, kids, Abyss was the NWA heavyweight champion. And what a shitty reign that turned out to be. He's in the ring with Sting and Christian. So first off, you devalue your title by having your champion pinned in about five minutes. Right. So you just you just reveal to the world that your champion's a geek. Mm-hmm. So Sting had actually pinned him with the Scorpion Death Drop or whatever and, and uh, pinned him. But So your champion's a geek, your belt ain't worth shit, and is now being fought amongst two men, Christian and Sting. And Tom Coe's out there locked in a cage. They don't want him to interfere. And I was thinking to myself... What if he interferes? The champion has been eliminated. But what happens if Tomko escapes and he beats up both Sting and Christian and it's like a double DQ? Does Abyss just get the belt? Do they both <laughs> get the belt? Who gets the belt? In a DQ, in a DQ the, t- the title changes hands three-way where the champion's already been eliminated. Obviously nobody thought of this. Who gives a fuck? So, well, I did, because because they're trying to hide uh, Tomko. Like, they're trying to make sure the ref doesn't see him interfering. He, he was, in fact, when, he, when they released him from the cage, he, he was sneaking in behind the ref's back. Yeah. For a, a long time, by the way. Yeah, but a six-foot-ten man just sneaking <laughs> around. Giant tattoos and huge muscles. Hitting, hitting moves and shit like that, and the ref doesn't see him. And, and I just thought, you know, if you're trying so hard to hide him, there must be a reason for it. How about you explain to us what will happen if he gets caught? I don't know. I don't fucking know. So, they did this. Let me let me just try and I'll I'll just read this so you can see what we've got here. All right, Sting, after pinning the champion, apologized. Hey, I'm sorry, man. He did. He he offered Abyss his hand. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I I bested you in this contest. <laughs> so Abyss responds by goozling him, and Mitchell's like, "Kill him," and Abyss instead just walks away. So he walks away and. And then we've got Christian working over Sting. Sting made a big comeback. I love in Sting's comeback how he'll take, like, a giant boot to the face and he'll just jump right up, Superman Sting. Mm-hmm. But then later he goes for a splash and bonks into the padded turnbuckle and he's out. <laughs> he's out cold. This is kryptonite. So they're doing this wacky shit, and then Mitchell came back out. He was there to survey the situation, and they said. Sting put on the scorpion. Mitchell hit the guy with the key and set Tomko free. Then he took the ref. Tomko hit Sting. Christian made the cover. Sting kicked out. Abyss ran down. He attacked Tomko. Sting hit the unprettier on Christian. Christian kicked out. Ref took a bump. Sting put the scorpion on Mitchell. Abyss uh, came into the ring. He had a chain. He hit Sting. Crowd sang the Abyss song. (laughs) Yeah, that was the highlight of the whole show. Christian splashed Sting. Christian Pin Sting got the pin. That was the match. That was the match. So, the main event of the next pay-per-view is Angle versus Christian for the NWA title. As Ed Tang put it, hey, it's a heat main event. It is a heat main event. They are so confident in all their TNA main eventers that the biggest match they could come up with is two WWE guys. (laughs) You know, at some point, aside from the guys who have absolutely no other option... And the guys who are making tons and tons of money. At what point do you just get too embarrassed to be on the show? <laughs> At what point does the show become so bad you say, I don't want people to watch the show and see me on it? Shouldn't that point arrive at some point? Shouldn't, shouldn't that... Uh, shouldn't someone... Fuck all that. This is what I want to know. I asked myself this question during the main event when I, when I saw the, the convoluted, wacky storytelling that, that Russo thinks is so great that nobody can follow. And I just thought... We always ask the question, 
who watches the TV and gets compelled to buy the pay-per-view? Why would you buy the pay-per-view? It really hit me watching this. Who buys these shows and why? I don't know. Is, is someone so entertained by the circus? Yeah, who is... Uh, I guess one of them would be Jubs, because he sent me a, a, a text. Did he like this show? Let me read you the text that he sent me. Jubs, everybody. He sent me a text tonight, which said... If I can find it here. This is impossible. VKM segment was so awesome. <laughs> okay, now, here's here's a question i got to ask. I will... I will say that Jubs exists. I've met him. He's wacky. There's one. Yeah. If he lived in Seattle, he'd have been with Brent in the in the loony bin. But the question is seriously, how can there be thirty thousand Jubs? <laughs> That's not possible. That's impossible. So what are the other twenty nine thousand people like? How how does this how does this promotion sell pay per views? Any. This ain't like I mean I can I can imagine a, a year and a half ago or two years ago when you had great AJ oh, Styles, when you had AJ Joe and Daniels and, and Joe oh well, fuck yeah when you were guaranteed a great pay per view every time out that's one thing but when it's just these are gone bullshit 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 month after month after month of convoluted booking it's bad enough watching it for free who pays thirty dollars to try and keep up with this stuff I just don't get it <laughs> it seems like a bad idea. So that was a TNA show, kids. Thumbs down. Please don't buy it. Do not buy the show. Do not buy the replay. Do not buy the DVD. If you did buy it, just drink. Yeah, just... Hey, you know what, though? If you love it, God bless you. Everybody needs a fan. But I don't get it. Actually, if, if you love it, write in and, and let us know what you love about it. I don't want to argue with you. I'm not going to attack you. I'm not going to debate you. I just want... What is, it, what is it about TNA that you enjoy? Let's do that. I want everybody to send your emails mm-hmm. to... Figure four at ix.netcom.com or the Brian Alvarez at f4wonline.com. Either one will work. Brian at wrestlingobserver.com works as well. With the subject line, why I like TNA. There you go. And I'm not going to say we will read all of them on the air because I don't want you guys sending stuff just so we'll read it. I want you to only send this if you, if you honestly buy, and I'm not talking about downloading them for free. You must buy all of these pay-per-views, and I want you to tell me why you like them. Do not do this just to get your name read on the air, because if I get zero, that's saying something. There's a point to this. Everybody send in and let us know, and we will read select ones on the air. TNA. TNA sucked, not to the level of the ECW show, which was significantly worse. Yeah, it really was. This show, this show just sucked for the usual TNA reasons. Those being that it makes no sense. It makes no sense every week. The thing is, like, I don't want to get into a big debate here based around religion, but Sting is the worst Christian <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Why? Yes. Okay, here's the deal. There's this big guy, and he had an issue at one point in his life. He was sent to prison. He apparently. Did his time. He got out. He is now an upstanding citizen. He's trying to... To one degree or another? Sure. You know what I mean, though. But he's trying to trying to turn his life around in a, in a positive, heelish manner. And he hasn't <laughs> killed anybody recently or anything of that nature. And he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to get this out. For some reason, Sting is incessantly harassing this man. Yeah. He won't leave him alone. He must tell the secret. I know you don't want to. I know you're ready to kill somebody right now. You must tell the secret. And not only do you have to tell me the secret, you have to tell the whole world. And if you don't, I'm going to take your manager and violently attack him. No, he violently attacked him all night. Sting was beating the living fuck out of James Mitchell. And they didn't even say Sting. It was Steve Borden. It was Steve Borden. As Mike Sunday pointed out, he's out of character. He's out of character. As Steve Borden. <laughs> which sucks for many reasons. Most of all, it's the worst thing you can ever do would just say, all that other stuff we do is fake. This is real. I was wondering, he was out of character as far as a Christian. He was beating the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> he was just beating the hell out of him and pounding him, and he was all bloody, and he was threatening to just... He ended up handcuffing him to the, uh, the, the chain fence, the prison. fence outside the prison, and he was just a violent, raving lunatic. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? You're the babyface? 
I don't understand. No. Oh, I've given up on trying to understand. Oh, and yet. also the man of Christ not only beat up Jim Mitchell, but he threw him into the trunk of his car to drag him to the prison to beat him up more outside. He really was a dick tonight. I was like, oh, you're that. on the wrong side of the fence, buddy. Yeah. You're you're assaulting a man nearly to the point of, of homicide. You should be doing time. You should be doing time. Jesus. That was the first thing. What would Jesus do? There's your aunt. there's your question right there. I, I strongly suspect Jesus would not beat the pits out of Jim Mitchell. No. No matter how evil he looks. God, this was just crazy. No, no, it was stupid. You know, you go do a confession in a little box, and a fist comes through the wall and you, you chokes you. You know, walk up in front of millions and get a mic and just tell your worst secret that you don't want to tell, but they're forcing you. They're forcing you. He's being forced to tell the secret. Well, man, we'll, we get, need, to, we'll we, get to the end at the end. We need Craig on the show to explain this from a Christian point of view. I strongly suspect he will not be able to do it. So, they recap the pay-per-view. Team 3D was threatening to kill Spike, who, I don't know what has happened to Spike, but he looks like their father. <laughs> Team 3D went down to the ring to face LAX. They had told him not to come down to the ring. He was down to the ring within four seconds. Literally four seconds. Started climbing the ropes. Bubba dragged him backstage, so the bad guys got the heat on Devon. All sorts of stuff went down, and Bubba made the hot tag. Refused to sell a thing. And then Moody Jack came out for the distraction. Hernandez hit Bubba with a slapjack and got the pin. It wasn't long enough for the Dudleys to go half speed. And <laughs> I guess Moody Jack will be replacing Conan for the time being, and I'm not down with that, but what can you do? So, that was that. I remember none of this. And we had, uh, you don't remember any of this? I I, I remember, well, no, I remember the uh, the finish when you told me, I remember the spike stuff, but I, remember, I, don't, I don't remember anything about the match itself. It was a minute long. Oh, there you go. Dumb shit. Then we had Abyss screaming and breaking things and going... This was awesome. Yeah. Just him walking down a long hallway being abyss. He does a lot of that. Then we had another brawl. Gail and Jackie were having a huge fight in the bathroom. And security was there to break it up. More security than broke up Joan Angle, I think. And Don was like, man, at the pay-per-view, we had more involvement with women than we've had in some time. And I was like, it is. It really is 1998. <laughs> Nobody learned a thing from last year when WWE, every segment that WWE had involving women died. Yeah. Died, 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 died. Nobody gives a fuck about women in wrestling anymore. I'm sorry, Christy Hemi. <laughs> this is not me just saying this. Take a look at the quarter hours. Nobody gives a shit about women in wrestling nowadays. And TNA just keeps adding more women. Then we had the Christie, speaking of. She was doing a sit-down promo as they recapped the pay-per-view. <clears throat> Awful. The only good part was Kip came in, Kip James, and sat down and, and basically just said, women in this business, and then just started laughing like a madman. That was, at one point, a direct quote. Women in this business. Actually, ha, 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 ha. I the direct quote. He said, women in this business. <laughs> I miss Steve Austin. Oh, God, he was great. He'll be back soon. He's much better than Kip James. Oh, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> we may be in the minority. Christian came out with his new wacky uh, title belt. He's the champion. He said he was the biggest star in TNA history, won the biggest prize, blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, <coughs> pardon me, everybody. No, no, that's fine. He said everybody knew Angle's history. He was an Olympic gold medalist and a shoot fighter. Apparently, I didn't know his history. When did this happen? I don't know. Christian knows the inside scoop, apparently. Crowd chanted Angle. He came out. He's a baby face this week. And they had a big screaming match back and forth. And Basically, Christian said he's hired a consultant. Somebody who knows and wrestles and thinks just like Kurt Angle. I have no idea who this person could possibly be in this business. I can't imagine anyone in the world who thinks like Kurt Angle. Angle said he wanted to know who it was. And Christian refused. They dropped some names. Goldberg. Lesnar, blah, blah, blah. Crowd chanted RVD. Yeah. That was awesome. He really thinks and works <laughs> like Kurt Angle. When I think of a guy that will tell me how Kurt Angle operates, I think Rob Van Dam. 
Then we had a uh, Christian and Angle getting in a brawl. Angle gave him a German. Christian ran for his life. That was that. So we had more of Steve Bourne and Jim Mitchell. They had now been fighting for 23 minutes. This is for sure assault. <laughs> it's more than slapping yeah, the guy around. F- fighting involves that Mitchell has had some offense. Sure. He got his ass kicked. He had been beaten for 23 minutes at this point. And after commercial, he had been now beaten for 27 minutes. They talked about the blah, blah, blah. Mitchell said, why does you care about Abyss? He's nothing but a piece of shit, an animal. He's my meal ticket. You are the true piece of garbage, said Sting. Real tough guy, aren't you, he said, as he beat him <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> as the non-athlete was handcuffed to the defense. I swear to God he said this. Real tough guy, aren't you, Sting said. Continue to beat him repeatedly. This was really a retarded show. Yeah. So, that was that. And then Nash said it was extreme makeover time for Sanjay and Jay Lethal. And then in ran Austin Aries, and he's beating everybody up. And just like I wrote in the newsletter after the pay-per-view, you see these X-Division guys having a brawl, and Kevin Nash with his gray hair is, is just standing there completely immobile, mm-hmm. looking at everybody, and it's like a playground fight. It's like the children are having a little brawl. They're having and, a tussle. And Uncle Nash is like, you children need to stop that. It's horrible. Yeah. These guys are clowns. James Storm and Lance Hoyt. Jackie is now Miss Tennessee. Dale Torborg and A.J. Pierzynski were outside. Very good. That's right. Well, I wrote it down, jackass. You can't mispronounce Pierzynski unless you're an idiot, which you would be. I'm turning you down. Oh, come on. Just need a little bit of, uh, you don't need to be here for anything sports related. So they uh, had a little wacky match and and this, that, and the other thing. Storm actually did most of the match with his hat on. Let me tell you something. When I went down to Oregon and I wrestled, I need you here for a minute, actually. What was that Mexican's name down in Oregon? Jesse Jr. Jesse Jr. Jesse Jimenez Jr. When I went down and wrestled him, and he was a babyface and I was the heel, my my whole gimmick was I claimed I was, in fact, not a Mexican. I believe you're, you cut a promo with the exact words, I am not a Mexican, I am a white guy. That's right. And he was a Mexican. So to mock him, at one point during the match, I put on his poncho and his sombrero. I went for a moonsault, he moved, I crashed, everybody cackled, that sort of thing. But the point is, this was on an indie show in the middle of Oregon where he can get away with his bullshit and not on national TV. When you have just beaten up your, your partner after four years and you've gotten glass in his eye and you've beaten up women and you're supposed to be this evil threat, this new big heel on the scene... Don't wrestle the fucking match with your cowboy hat on like it's a clown show. This was ridiculous. So he had this fucking match with his cowboy hat on, and AJ ended up um, that being Pierzynski. Not Styles. Clobbering Hoyt with a uh, chair shot to the back, and then uh, Storm at the super kick for the pin. So it took James Storm, the girl, and two baseball players to beat Lance Hoyt. Correct. Marty Jannetty, 2007. <laughs> That's what this is right here. So, and then Petey ran in. Why? Because this was just wrong. I don't know why. I'm waiting for you to explain this to me. Why the hell did Petey run in? Because Petey's angry at James Storm for putting glass in Chris Harris's eye. Stupid. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. So then we had... the show yet? No, there's still more. AJ Styles did a promo. I'm just skipping Eric Young. It was more wackiness. AJ actually cut a funny promo. This is awesome. They were talking about the match with Angle, and AJ's like, what has you really earned, honestly? Boris said, well, a gold medal. And AJ goes, whoop de doo I won a blue ribbon. I was all con- county in the triple jump. <laughs> yeah. I actually had to look up the triple jump. Yeah, you don't believe this was an actual athletic event. But when I heard about it, I thought, what, do you just jump three times in succession? <laughs> and the answer is, yes. And you try and get higher each time? I get farther. No, that's not the answer. It's it's when you were in elementary school and you did the hop, skip, and the jump. Yeah, that's what the that's what this is. And he he's all county. He was all county in the triple jump. He's lying, by the way. Are you saying he's not a shoot triple jumper? I'm, I'm telling you because when he was on Observer Live, Dave actually asked him if he had any jumping experience, and he said no. <laughs> Fucking he asshole! Lie. He worked us. He did. He worked us. He so, doesn't have any blue ribbons either. That's right. And so I also looked it up in Wikipedia, which added. Competitions in standing triple jump are not very common today, 
But in the past, it was an Olympic event in the early 1900s. That would qualify as the past. That would qualify as lying on the part of AJ Styles. Angle faced AJ. They had a match which I want to see on pay-per-view for 20 minutes. It only went about four as usual, <laughs> but god damn it was fun. Yes. It was, uh, the best part was at the beginning, AJ just goes, actually it was Angle went for a shoot, and AJ did the wackiest sprawl in the world, but he got away. And he started jumping up and down like he won all county in the you triple thought, jump again. He won a million dollars in a game show. Sure, he won all county in the triple jump again, which is funnier. And uh, then Angle just stuffed him and crushed him, and it was great. Well, the, the crushing was even better because AJ went for a shoot and came up about a yard short. Yes. <laughs> and, and Angle just moved behind him and, and went to work. So Angle just destroyed him and uh, ended up giving the Olympic slam onto a chair after uh, AJ attempted to use the chair, and it was great. This needs to just, like I said, pay-per-view, 25 minutes, Brian's a happy man. Unfortunately, that ain't happening anytime soon because... Got to have Angle and Christian. And that's the big money match, kids. Welcome to Heat or SmackDown, whichever will make you less angry. And then we had the... Oh, I'd like to make one more comment about this match that angered me greatly. Tapings were Monday night. Okay. The show aired on a Thursday. Tapings were Monday night. Oh, his pay-per-view was Sunday. Yeah. Mr. Angle had a concussion on the pay-per-view. Yep, Angle got a head injury on the pay-per-view, and they threw him out back in the ring Monday night. He said, don't worry, Dixie, I'm ready to go. <sighs> Everybody needs to go to the front page of F4WOnline.com. Check out today's daily news update. There's an article in the New York Times, in fact, with a lot of quotes from Chris Nowinski about depression-induced suicides as a result of head trauma. Everybody check that out. You should not be running back into the ring the day after a fucking concussion, but uh, no surprise, Angle pretty much stated on Observer Live, the question was directly asked, if you are mildly hurt, will you lie to Dixie Carter? And the answer was yes, yes I, I will. I will lie to Dixie Carter. I'm I will, going to. I will lie, he said. But if I'm really hurt, I'll sit out. And, of course, with Kurt Angle, you broke your fucking neck, and that didn't count as really hurt. He, he was going to say on fire, but I think he'd wrestle, a, he'd wrestle a blaze. He'd have to be missing a limb. Yeah. I mean, it'd have to be a major limb. Yeah, not like a finger. Like his head. <laughs> Which is close. After the video wrap-up, Sting was in the ring calling out Abyss. Basically, everything we talked about at the beginning of the show, he demanded he reveal the secret to the whole earth, or... Uh, you know, there was no or. Just do it. Yeah, do it. And when he didn't, when he uh, did a lot of his usual yelling and screaming and that sort of thing, um, ended up with Sting going, well, it's public domain. I'll just go uh, find out myself. It's public record. I will go do the research, which the very first segment of the show, or as soon as we got the prison, I turned to you and said, does he know this is real name? Can you just look this up? Is well, they this don't. The world's they worst? only know Chris. <laughs> and I don't think he went in No one in the TNA office has a... Uh, <laughs> Any record of what Chris's last name is? They're probably being nice and not revealing this fucking information for this madman. All I'm saying is that Sting is the worst detective ever. Well, yeah. Okay. We need the Fast Johnnies or whatever we're on the The forum. Keen Eddies? <laughs> Keen Eddies. They need to investigate this one. Find out what Abyss did. And don't read the spoilers. I was going to say, that's cheating. <laughs> it's cheating. Following clues and, and getting the answers is cheating. TNA. Oh, the shit that is TNA. <laughs> I only remember one segment, and it sucked. They teased that the great secret of Abyss would be revealed tonight. That was the main event. Sting will reveal Abyss' secret. Yeah. Main event. Joe came out dressed like a fan, dressed up like Samoa Joe. A wacky t-shirt, sweatpants, sneakers, white, white shoes. Still mad at Angle. Talked about how um, they weren't friends. Vangle's car was stuck on the train tracks. He wouldn't help him, and he wouldn't even spit on him if he was burning. <laughs> what kind of a friend is Samoa Joe? His friends burn, and he spits on them? <laughs> Jesus. Well, his, his point being he wouldn't. Never mind. That's a horrible point. If they were friends, he'd spit on him when he was burning. <laughs> I want everyone to keep in mind I hang out with this guy. Asshole. So anyway... 
Then we had Joe saying the reality. I have this vision of something horrible happening, and something on my, my, my shoe or my leg catches fire, and I scream, ah, oh, my leg's on fire. And Brian comes running and spits on my leg as furiously as he can. Well, that's what Joe would do if you were his friend, apparently. No, no. He's saying he's... Oh, dude. No. I'm trying to decide if I'm worth explaining this to you. I, I know exactly what you're trying to say. Joe said, we're not friends. I would not even spit on you if you were burning. Thus meaning, if we were friends, I would, in fact, spit on you. Well, if, if in friends, he... he, he spit on him. No, he would get more fluid. He did not specify. He just said he would not spit on him. I was right. It was not worth it. I'm sorry, everyone. I wasted all your time. <laughs> That's a poll I'll win. <laughs> would Joe spit on his friends? If they were burning. <laughs> if they were burning. That's the key. So then Kurt Angle came out and, and uh, ranted about some stuff. God, it, it's it's another show where i got to read the notes because I just can't remember. It's all a blur. Angle came out and announced he'd be the special enforcer at the pay-per-view for the... Wait, who would? Angle... <laughs> <laughs> they had words. Okay, I, I remember... I, I, like, I remember this now. Joe said he wanted to fight Angle again, but he wanted him to win the title first so it would be a title match. Therefore, Joe had declared that he would be the ringside enforcer for Angle and Cage at the pay-per-view. Again, how that's supposed to make me want to pay to see the match, I don't know. That's right. But I do at least remember he said it after being reminded. Thank God. <laughs> in great detail. That's right. Thank God. So, then, let's see what happened. This is all the same bit, isn't it? Talking about consultants, Joe said he's not a liar. Oh, Christian's mystery consultant. Angle wanted to know if it was Joe. Joe said no. Boy, those of you that don't watch TNA are probably just intrigued by the programming <laughs> on this on this particular television show. So, again, you are supposed to buy the pay-per-view so you can find out who Christian's consultant is. Sure. As we've been discussing, what sells pay-per-views is who will win. I bet they reveal it. Yes, not even an issue. You know, what's funny is I, I know that they're taping Monday, and I guarantee they'll reveal a consultant before the pay per view. That's entirely I possible. I guarantee fucking damn to <laughs> that one. Yep. So, um, I don't even know. I don't even care. <laughs> I'm skipping to the next segment. When something's this useless, I just I I can't even handle it. Something about liars and just read the newsletter, everybody. Let me let me tell you how many words I wrote on this, so so you don't have to think that I that I wasn't paying attention. I wrote. 451 words <laughs> on that segment alone. On that segment alone. And I don't remember a goddamn thing about it. That should tell you everything you need to know about this segment. Then we had Tomko coming out and telling the announcers that Christian had told him that there were going to be some changes and it might start with the announcers. Nothing ever became of this. Nope. Apparently now Christian is, is in charge of all personnel. Yeah, he's apparently uh, the head of, head of uh, the championship committee now. Or and, something. And, and the TV production crew. Jim Mitchell and Abyss were backstage. Jim Mitchell is mad that Sting was holding a secret over Abyss's head. <laughs> hmm. Let's just move on. <laughs> Raven's crew was meeting backstage with Cornette. They were all, I swear to Christ, in their Halloween costumes. That's awesome. No joke. <laughs> Four men in their, in, in, at, trick-or-treating, really, at Jim Cornette's desk. Yeah. And he had no candy for them. Cornette said, you've got to wrestle. You're being paid. So we had Raven versus Rhino. Rhino took off his bird mask to reveal that he was AJ Styles. That would be Raven, but yes. So, um, what did I say? You said Rhino. Maybe Rhino did take his bird mask off. Maybe they both had one on. Don't did confuse it? the listeners. What? So anyway, in the whole deal here, apparently Raven and AJ Styles must be in cahoots. Yes. Because AJ Styles was out there with serotonin. But of course, he didn't bother trying to fill in that piece of the puzzle. We're just supposed to forget and not think about that. Well, you know, you'll never think about it again. Uh, just the fact that I thought about it tells you something. Yeah, but it, it, it will never happen again. They will not be teaming next week. And the best part, by the way, was that when the match started, uh, all the serotonin ran in, and that was not a DQ. And then Rhino, oh. Raven, or the the man who we thought was Raven, began hitting Rhino with a stick. That wasn't a DQ. And then once Raven unmasked as AJ Styles, that was a DQ. So, he was, he was DQ'd for lying. Well, I'm not even lying. Outside interference, not a DQ. Hitting a man with a stick, not a DQ. Posing as another wrestler, disqualification. Yeah. Lying. In, impostering. Mm -hmm. Impersonating. Christian was now in the truck, ranting and raving. 
telling geeks to push buttons. Again, nothing became of this. <laughs> Christian just has full reign of the place. He's pushing buttons in the production truck. I don't know why. I guess because in 1997, everybody used to go to the production truck on Raw. I distinctly remember that. I remember that. So now we're 24 minutes in the show. There's been one minute of action, which ended via DQ due to imposterization. It is the paparazzi production stuff. Borash and Eric Young were buying condoms, and they ran into James Storm and the Rednecks. Small world. Yes, they, 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 they ran into James Storm, Miss Tennessee, and uh, the refs, like Watts, were all, all these men hanging out at 7-Eleven at 4 a.m. Yep. All of this to just get over that Borash and Tracy are fucking or something. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. Oh, looky, 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 Miss Tennessee. Look, everybody, Eric Young, my Robert. Who <laughs> guys? Buying rubbers, four o'clock in the morning. Good night. <laughs> you either get chlamydia like me, or you don't. You gonna wear it or not, huh? Price check on condom, please. Price check. Price check. I got the condoms, all right. You two boys go and have a good time, all right? <laughs> oh my God! Thank you. It's all right. There it going, fine rubbers. I've seen it all now. Robert Rude did tell Tracy she had one more week to sign Eric Young or she would be fired. Why they want to sign Young at this point, I don't know. She still has not figured out, just threaten him that she'll be fired. Because apparently she has the power to fire Eric Young. Why not? I don't know. Because nothing makes sense in this show. Because this show sucks. <laughs> Matisha interviewed BG and Kip James. Kip had his mouth taped up so he wouldn't say anything stupid, but of course he tore it off and... Gave this speech about how this had always been about men, this business. It would be about men until it no longer existed. And then uh, BG finally walked off saying he could take no more. Whole segment went 15 seconds. They're breaking up yeah. uh, three live crew, and they get 15 seconds on TV to do it. Good times. LAX promo featuring Conan, which was the best thing on the show. As also usual. went about 15 seconds. I think they took a camera crew to Conan's house. Yeah. <laughs> and hadn't got this promo in his hallway. So then Sting came down and revealed the secret, being Abyss shot a man three times and put him in a coma. The man lived. The man was Abyss's father. So now Sting wasn't just content to reveal the secret. He had to know why Abyss shot his father. He just won't leave the fucking guy alone. Oh. Hail Jesus. So then Abyss ran out, attacked Sting, and for having just revealed that he had shot his father three times. It was a very vanilla attack. He yeah. ran down. And he, he, tonight was one of his Muppet nights. Yeah. Some nights he looks like a giant Muppet, and this is one of them. He's kind of throwing these forearms, and they're windmilling, and they're bouncing off Sting. And he's he's not you know, he's doing the same thing backstage in the, the promo with Mitchell. He's just walking back and forth and whimpering and shaking things. And he, sometimes he comes off as scary. A lot of times he comes off as just very, very silly. Abyss did not care about this. The crowd didn't care yeah. about this. Sting didn't care about this. I don't know why we're supposed to care about this. Fought towards the back. Mitchell ended up throwing a fireball at Sting, which actually looked cool, and Sting sold it like a madman. And amazingly, and I would not believe this if I had not wrote it down, they showed a replay after commercial. And, uh, that is amazing. I swear to God, a replay. That, that, that That's good. I don't want to... This is only the second replay I can remember in four years. <laughs> yes. So they get a thousand for that. That's good. I don't want to ignore that. That happened. That's a good thing. That being said, this segment, within about two minutes, had the revelation that one of their wrestlers had shot his father and tried to kill him and put him into a coma, and a fireball. Mm? <laughs> Which one of these is supposed to get over? Because you can't really have both. I I'm going to forget one of them. As it turns out, I mostly remember the fireball. Yeah. That was, that was more appalling than the attempted murder. Yes. Christian versus Daniels. Announcer still appalled about the fireball. I believe this is the actual first wrestling match on the show. Yeah. Uh, so then Joe came down about a minute in. <laughs> we were at this point. We, we hated the show beyond anything. You were fast running through the commercial, and you went like 30 seconds too long, and there was Joe at the top of the ramp, and you just wailed in, in misery. Yeah. Here is someone already running in. Oh. So you ran in. And the announcers are like, we need Borash down here to find out why Joe's here. <laughs> that did not once cross my mind. 
I wish Jerry Borhas was here to interview Samoa Joe and establish what he is doing at ringside. I just want to see some wrestling. <laughs> is that asking too much? Apparently it is. So, Borash comes out and we got another promo in the middle of the main event. Joe said, "My, I'm here to uh, prove a point to Kurt Angle. I don't know. I have no idea. So, they went to commercial and came back and Daniels had Christian in the Koji clutch. Tomko hit the ring. Joe then hit the ring and stopped him from interfering. Right there in front of the ref, there were two extra men inside the ring, fighting. 600 pounds of beef just standing there. Not a DQ. And the ref was distracted. Christian ended up kicking Daniels in the nuts, gave him the imprimatur for the pin. And uh, this actually was a match I was talking about earlier. You wonder why nobody gives a fuck about TNA and the title and Christian. He needed outside interference from two men and a kick to the balls to beat Chris Daniels. That's your champion. That's the best guy. That's, That's the best guy in your company. The best guy you could find needed to help two men and to cheat, yes. Way to go. Thumbs down. <laughs> Deep down. Thumbs buried. I actually went in the backyard and dug a hole to make more room for my thumb to get it down there. In case anybody were confused about what we might give this show. It sucked. It, it sucked. It sucks a cock. I just... It is so monumentally frustrating.